Okay. Uh, in the adventures of searching for bandsaw things, I came across some some old stuff, and this follows my philosophy of if you want to learn a new trick, read an old book. And uh, I'll just thumb through some of this. I I think I'd like to scan it eventually, but. This was created by the, the Duval Technical Institute, and it is 12th edition, which is kind of cool because it's from the 40, 1947. They kind of talk about, you know, where the manufacturing plant was. They had like a very cool course of, you know, the, the Technical Institute for Operators, and free laboratory service. I wonder if that offer still stands. You know what the stores looked like. A little bit of history. You know, like this, the sawfish was the, the first saw. The flint saw, Stone Age. And then saw found in tomb of Tebas, Egypt. So, a first bandsaw, the original bandsaw, 1808. And, um... Endless bandsaw, London, England. Then they go in and they talk about the history of the file, rasps from the Bronze Age, a caveman using a metal file. I don't know what's more impressive, caveman using a file or a picture of a caveman. Band file. So this is kind of interesting. 19th century, um, very old, 1860, uh, from... New Britain, of New Britain, Connecticut. So the do-all is the combination of the three things. It is the band saw, the band file, and the band polisher. And uh, they go in and they talk about, you know, the, the cool thing about this band is the welder. And this really is what makes it a very interesting machine, is the ability to put it through a piece and then weld it. So internal cutting of metal is really where this thing earns its money. And then the same thing with the files, right? So the files go around. But um, everyone that I've seen who talks about these files are terrified of them. And they never actually, I've never seen one running on the internet or anything. And then the third function is the polishing cloth, or emery, right? So it was just a long strip of emery that could actually go around. Um, this is similar to my machine. I think this is a 12 or 1612, uh, but it has this pulley. Oh, look, it does have a patent number on it. Mine doesn't have a patent number on it because it's 1930. I think I found a new motor, so I'm going to come back to that one. Uh, this one was a little bit different because mine... The, the speedometer was actually not, well, it's an indirect measurement. Um, mine is actually like a, a positional measurement. Uh, this is the little blower, the air pump. Uh, this is the weight-operated pusher saw, which is kind of cool. Uh, of course, then they had hydraulic stuff. Uh, they talk about the transmission, how the transmission actually work. Um, cut yourself a saw blade, do the dial indicator, um... You know, automatic butt welding. You said butt welding. Uh, starting a hole, how to do it. And this is kind of cool, where it talks about, okay, look, if you have a 16th inch blade, you can pretty much cut a square. Uh, a 32nd inch blade, a uh, quarter inch, you could do a radius of one inch. So the smallest blade that I have is a um, quarter inch blade. I doubt I'll be able to ever find a 1 16th inch bit blade, but who knows. Um, this was kind of cool. It, it, it taught me that what this original design was, was that you would take this whole piece off and then interchange it so you wouldn't have to readjust your guide blades. And they talk about like, you know, you, you would just change the collets on a lathe. So it was very interesting to see how they actually do it. Uh, and, and of course, this is a sales book, right? It's from the Institute of the company that made it. Infotizing. And they talk about, look, if you hand filed, you could do this much in an hour. 
if you did a jig filer, you could do that. Or if you had a do-all bandsaw, you could get that much dust. Oops, sorry, sorry, book. Different types of files, contour files, the super band, uh, external filing, internal filing. Machining methods. So they talk about, okay, look, the shaper versus the contour saw. Chip waste, material saved. Uh, and then they talk about the vertical shaper. Um, they talk about, you know, somebody who actually sent them a, a thing saying, okay, well, if you use the nibbler, the nibbler is loud, rat tat tat, and this one is silent like a train. I don't get that either. Um, lathe versus a contour saw, right? So the bandsaw is the most efficient way to cut out the most amount of metal. And, and that's really what this book is trying to say. It's like, look, you can cut it on a torch or you can contour bandsaw it. Um, then they talk about like little pieces like this, like actually making a little piece and making a stamp and a die. And here what this dude is doing is he's soldering, uh, I think that's a dude. Um, he's soldering all these pieces together and then cutting them out and then yielding all of these uh, different dies. And this guy here, uh, I think that's a guy, working on, on a nearly, working at nearly saw capacity. He's got a stack of, uh, you know, he pressed it, welded it, stacked it up, and then cut all this stuff out. So it's kind of cool. Then they talk about, okay, look, if you want to do a forging versus something else, it'll, it'll save you a whole bunch of money the old way painstaking center punching, tedious drilling, hammering the slug, filing off the drill marks, or you could just cut it on this. Um, but this is kind of cool because they're talking about, look, you can cut the die, the stripper, and the die shoe in one shot. So when you're, when you are making these types of clinker dies, um, die and punch are kind of part of the same operation. So uh, they're not wrong. Like, look how happy this guy is. He's so happy that he did that. He two two for one. Um, anyway, I'm only on page 100. So, die shoe holes, how to do saw, you know, how to... The, the benefits of properly cutting this stuff, you know, how to fill it, this, and, uh, like, the do-all does it all. Uh, special parts, you know, they, they, you know, if you ever have to make a heating element from scratch. Templates, you know, they talk about, okay, look, this one takes 20 minutes, 17 minutes. You know, just like weird demonstration stuff, like, don't get me wrong. Um, clamps, uh, sorry, cams, right? So back in the day when you made uh, screw machines, you would have different kind of... Uh, clamps, different kind of cams. Uh, they talk about, you know, the, the government issue, you know, military truck, machine shop. Um, and then, of course, it's got sales brochure stuff in it, like all the different kind of accessories. And a lot of this stuff is in, you know, different various manuals, like some of these pictures I recognize. Uh, model tool room of Cole Electric Company, Los Angeles. Do-all contour machine, do-all hydraulic surface grinder, more jig boring machine, do-all band filer, and a do-all gauge block set, right? So they're kind of bragging about how uh, they do absolutely everything in, in, in one machine, you know. It has everything in one machine, and that, that was kind of, like, they, they, they picked a great name for, for a saw. Don't get, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, every other page is a, isn't, is a, is an, is an ad. Um, but it kind of shows some cool, you know, accessories that you don't see often, you know, like blade guards and, uh, they talk about safety for a couple of seconds in this book. Uh, automatic contour machines. So this is kind of interesting. So like this guy here is cutting off big, huge, uh, laminated wood in a wavy pattern. And it's fed by hydraulic pressure and then follows the contour. Uh, you know, the butt welder. Butt welder. Uh, friction saw. This is kind of interesting where, uh, you know, like it's it's just like a, 
you know, just a blunt teeth. Uh, like it's, it's anyway. Um, okay. So let me just skip ahead here. <laughs> it's a pretty loaded book. Like, don't get me wrong. Like there's, uh, absolutely everything from how to do it. Okay. So they actually talk about how to make saw blades and they actually go in and they talk about, um, how they actually, uh, QC a blade, uh, verify its thickness, the metallurgy of the stuff. Um, they show like a production line. Like, look at how many they were making simultaneously. Uh, roll position, horizontal. Okay, so this was kind of a cool picture. So this was the um, a custom-made milling machine that, that probably feeds the blade and cuts the teeth all at the same time. And they have all of these milling cutters. Then, uh, you know, this guy in his fancy glasses, routine inspection, uh, winding it up on a coil, um, making sure magnified inspection, you know, um, making sure that all the teeth are properly cut, rolling it up, uh, baking it probably, you know, they put them into a furnace to harden them, uh, potentiometer controls heat and temperature furnace, um, then they pickle them to see, you know, which part is the, the hardest. Uh, you know, here is Peter the Pickler, who who pickled all the the saw blades. Uh, and they talk about jars contain pickling solution, and they, they dump them in different acids, I imagine. Just poisonous stuff. Just absolutely poisonous. Uh, photochemical graphics. Photomicrographs show how easily a tooth hardness depth may vary with a debt detrimental effects on saw life so you know as the saw gets used you know the depth line is too deep the 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 depth line is too shallow uh do all controlled depth line so they're saying they after etching this hardens probably differently this hardens probably differently if you if you use the saw wrong and then two controls. So too deep, not deep enough, just right. And then of course, you know, these these fellas here sitting here all day long measuring bandsaw blades, cutting them to length, putting them in packages, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you know, you if you want one or if you want a whole car load, uh, there's duals for that. Then they go and they talk about the laboratory, you know, uh, special report. So you used to be able to send them uh, a sample of something and they would send you a research report back saying this is how you would uh, cut it. So if you had like a weird material, uh, they would they would cut it for you, do like a little specimen and, um, you know, send it back. But, you know, can you imagine working in a machine shop where it's just like, okay, look, you got one, two, three, four bandsaws five bandsaws and that's really it so these guys all, all they did was all day long is you know they would do experiments on stuff at the back of the book is actually like a course so you can actually have like little you know here's a little project do this project what you learn out of the project and and uh you know what you can do in a pattern you know how they do these things uh then they talk about you know like just, just different um Cutaways, here's the butt welder jaw assembly back view, the butt welder back view. So I was taking apart mine the other day, so it's kind of cool to see. Uh, Speedmaster sleeve, so they just, you know, just cut one in half. That's the rotary air pump and the transmission cutaway. So, like, they, they did some cool little, uh, little, little things in there and, 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 and doing that. Uh, band filing, never, ever, ever going to use a band filer. So, uh, this is what my speed mat indicator looks like. So it's, as the motor goes in and out, it adjusts this. Um, anyway, that's really it. And then they go and they talk about, look, if you want training aids, you know, instruction manuals, you can get a selector dial just for classroom instruction. Um, but Dual was big in on educational stuff. They were one of the first companies, like this is 1947, and you can order a 16 millimeter sound motion picture film of 
operating gauge blocks and how gauge blocks are used and theory behind. And this is 1947. Like, you got to remember, like, that's, that's kind of actually uh, a little bit insane, actually. Then they have, like, letters of recommendation from the Electro Electrocon Corporation. Um, okay. Uh, apparently the guy from Duol, I can't remember his name, but he was big into, like, history of, of stuff. So, the, you know, he had, like, a machinery, the history of machine, and you could get this wall chart from them. It's my book now. 